Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Ellie Bidet, and I will be praying in French. Happy Sabbath, and I'm Sama, and I'll be praying in Swahili. Let's pray. Merci, Seigneur, pour ce, uh, ce Sabbath. Merci de nous avoir protégés. Je prie que tu sois avec nous pendant ce Sabbath, sois avec les freshmen, et garde-nous. Au nom de Jésus-Christ, Amen. Baba, na kushukuru kwa kila kitu lumetsaidia na leo, na kushukuru kwa baraka zako, na kushukuru kwa kila kitu lumetsaidia na leo tukiwa na Freshman Sabbath, tafadhali saidia endele vizuri na ubariki wa wote na uweze kuelewa nini unataka kutuambia kwa moyo wetu. Amina. Amen. the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, I worship his holy name, till I never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy
Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Join me in our first song with uh, helping our desire for God and help us sing Seek Ye First. we must first let him be our all in all. We all decide to follow Jesus as we sing. I've decided to follow Jesus.
stand as we sing our opening song as the deer. The scripture says, How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. Yeah. 
oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you. My name is Landon Hensel. My name is Emily Lucas. And we will be presenting the Arrow's Visit Trip. So on Wednesday, March 15th, we left GLA and we went to the Detroit airport and we flew to the Baltimore airport and then we got to Puerto Rico. Thursday, March 16th, we arrived in Puerto Rico around 11, 12 o'clock, and then um, we were waiting around, uh, as you see in the picture, and then um, later, we finally got to the university around four in the morning. Uh, we went to bed, and then the next day, we got an orientation to the campus, and um, that was pretty much our day. On Friday, um we worked and we had three different groups that were doing things. We had a painting group. They were painting um, roads and buildings. We painted yellow, blue, and white. Um, we had a group that was power washing and we had a group that was um, helping clean up all the plants and make them look very nice. Saturday, we went to the Bella Vista Church and um, they had us all come up front for um, all the youth came up front for um, like kind of an altar call. And then uh, we had Pollock afterwards. And then later that day, we went to the beach and uh, we did, we hung out and then we did worship and then we went back to the university. So on Sunday, we um, went to um, a cave exploring thing. And um, one of the caves that we went into, you could swim in it. And so, we went in, we were swimming, and if you swim back into the cave, there's like a ledge that we could all stand on. So we were all standing back there, and we saw some um, crabs and interesting things back there that we got to swim back with. Um, <laughs> and while we were back there, we sang um, the Eros theme song, and it sounded very beautiful because of the echoing in the cave. Um, on Monday, we got to do a science simulation, um, and basically, the university is big with nursing, and so they have a bunch of like robots and things, and um, we got to look around at those, which was very cool, and we did more work. So on Tuesday, we worked some more, and we also did a clinic with the Antillian Gymnastics team. Um, we helped them work on their tossing and elevators, and they um, showed us some of the old tricks that we kind of forgot about. Oh. Um, on Wednesday, we got to go to the beach and uh, go swimming, and um, we got to see some crabs, people got to tan, and then that night, we got to finally meet the uh, president of the university, and she, did it, uh, she gave us worship. On Thursday, we did a show with Antillian at Bella Vista, and it was really cool because we got to see their performances, and it was really cool to see something different than what we normally do. There's a lot of different tricks and stuff that they did. Friday, um, we did a we did the um, Friday night play, and it was very that was like probably one of the most emotional Friday night plays I've been in so far. And um, there's a lot of people crying, and yeah.
So for Saturday, we, um, during Sabbath school, we had a few special musics that we did. Um, and then we split up for Sabbath school, but we split up into like two different groups, one that did the Sabbath school in English and one that did the Sabbath school in Spanish. And then after Sabbath school, we did the Passion Play again. And then later that day, we had a special activity. We got to go and get ice cream and hang out in town for a little bit, so that was fun. Sunday, we got to go to a different beach, and that one was kind of scary because there was a lot of rocks, and it was kind of like a coral reef out there. And um, uh, then we went back, and we just hung around and cleaned up. Then on Monday, we got to go to um, a zip line adventure. And the first one we went on was really big. It was called the Monster. And then there was another really big one right after that. And then we got to get on like a truck. And they brought us back. And then we went on to another course of zip lines. They were a little bit smaller, but there were seven of them. And that was a lot of fun. And it was super cool. If you looked down, you could see everything. And then Tuesday, um, we basically just hung out at Adra, which is like kind of a compound uh, for missionaries. And then we went to the San Juan airport, and we left and came back to Galah. How do I get on my slide up there? Oh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, there were two mission trips. There was the Arrows one, and then the general mission trip with the rest of the school, and that's this one. So, we got there, that's the airport. We got there like really late at night, and then we go out, and in the parking lot, that's our bus. <laughs> it, was, it was really cool. There were like lights everywhere. There were speakers inside. It was really loud. Yeah, and then that's where we spent the night. Everyone fit into that one tiny room, and we got terrible sleep, but yeah. And then, oh yeah, we saw these things. <laughs> and then the next Sabbath, we go handing out great controversies in the neighborhood, and that was really cool, because we got to like, here in the States, you give people stuff, and they don't really, like, care. They might, like, not even accept it. But over there, you could, like, give them the book, and then they would start reading it right then. And that was just really cool to see. And then we went into the rainforest. We stayed at a camp that, yeah, was in the rainforest. These were the cabins. They had, like, four separate, like, cabin rooms that had their, like, yeah, where we stayed. And then, yeah, we painted a lot, like a lot. We painted three of those buildings. Four, four. Oh yeah, the three cabins and then the one like main building. Yeah, a lot of painting. <laughs> a lot of painting. And then, when we would like finish painting in the morning, we would get to go swim in the pool for like some of the afternoon, which was really fun. More painting. <laughs> and then one of the days, we went to like this rock river waterfall thing, and we could like climb up the rocks and like be in the water. And oh yeah, we also like did some other stuff, like these people were carrying away little chunks of concrete. And I don't have pictures of it, but at the same time, there were people like moving branches and stuff. And at night, we would do like these group worship time circle thing where, yeah, we, yeah, worship. And the cooks were good. Yeah, we had pina coladas, that was really good. And yeah, that was, that's it. Okay, so I will be talking about the week we did at ADRA, if we can get, 
the slides up, please? Thank you. Okay, so first off, I wanna say thank you to the kitchen staff. Um, they did a lot more than just make us food. Uh, they were there to listen to us, and it was really nice to just have them there, and without them, we would have starved. So <laughs> thank you to them. So like Jeffrey said, that was our seating, our, our sleeping area. So girls on one side, guys on the other, staff in the middle. Um, <laughs> it was definitely an interesting time. <laughs> um, so one of the first products we, projects we did was clean up this abandoned house. So this is like almost finished and like the next slide I think. So that was all the trash that we like pulled out from the yard and that maybe this is all the brush that was outside too and so this was the inside of the house um we weren't technically supposed to go in because um, it smelled bad and it was wet and really really dirty so there was a guy in there um, who would carry stuff out to us and there were so many termites in this building um i I had them, like I was looking down and they're like on my hands and stuff because of everything we were carrying out. But once everything was done, that was that last picture with, all, with a wheelchair in it. That was what the room looked like when we were done. So, I don't know what there isn't. So later we found out that the guy we were working with, Pastor Pedro, he uh, was the founder of the camp we stayed at. And he was working with yeah, it was like his own ministry where he would give, like, put these houses and put, like, a bunch of stuff in these houses as storage and give them out to people who really needed them. So later we found out that this building was going to be a house where they'd clean it up, fix it up, and store everything in it to be able to hand out to the community. So then we went to this lady's house. Um, I think her name was Rosalisa. She was 85 years old with colon cancer. And... Her house, her roof was pretty damaged. Um, there was a lot of fixing up we needed to do. And um, so we had people scraping all of the white, repainting all of the white, and um, fixing the roof. Uh, <laughs> so I really found out this lady wanted some things done in her yard. So she went out there with a machete herself and cut down one of the trees. <laughs> um, that's goals right there, I just have to say. And later, we would come back and wind down, play some games, um, have worship, and it was just a really good time to be able to be in that small space and like actually learn about each other, because I learned a lot about some people that I didn't know, and it was pretty cool. Um, this guy, his name was Frankie. <laughs> um, we love Frankie. So he showed up at that first place we went to, and he was hyping everyone up. Like, it was a lot of fun. He was just, like, making jokes, and he was, like, loud. And when we were tired, he hyped us up. And later that night, we see this guy pull in, and we were like, who is this? And Frankie came, and he was so grateful for the work he did that he gave us Krispy Kreme. <laughs> um, he was a really, really nice guy. So the last night we were there, this pulled into the driveway, and it was a good bus, like Jeffrey said. It was loud, and it really brought our spirits up. Uh, is that the last slide? Question mark? Could be. Okay, so I just want to say, um, back to the canvassing we did. There was this guy that me and Addison talked to, and he looked at the book, and he asked us if this was Ellen White. And we're like, of course, it, like, yes it is. And he was like, is she Christian? And we're like, she's Seven Day Adventist. And he was so excited that we were, he was like, oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, have a great day, have a great day. And we were like, you too. And we walked away, but I looked back and he was in his neighbor's yard flipping through the book with them. And that brought up my spirits and realized that if we show our faith that like they're, there's people who are gonna really accept that and it's like really important to not be scared of our faith. Um, but it was overall a really great experience um, for Arrows and General. And I have to say that if you have an opportunity to go on a mission trip, I would strongly suggest it. And if you wanna learn more about what we did, you can talk to anyone here, who, up here, or who went on the mission trip.
Scripture says, not to let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in also me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go, prepare to pla- I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you, there you may also be. Jesus. 
Nchira muji chuchujiwe Ijo na kora chose Na jona murana Yemi fitu mukundi Ume nyeru muzima Diko fitu mukundi Ume nyeru muzima Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our class pastor, Gavin Mascara. And our class president, Brett Brower. Let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you help us to seek you more, Lord, and that we're able to open our hearts and our minds to you this morning. And thank you for the Sabbath day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the topic that Brett and I decided to choose was desiring God, but more specifically, how can we desire God in our everyday lives? When we were discussing this topic, we realized that we didn't have all the answers, so that's why you guys are here, because we'd like to understand this question more too. So we'd like to hear some input, input from the parents and staff in this room and students, so that hopefully we could leave with a better understanding of this question today. So, the first question is, what are some things that we could do to help us better desire God in our everyday lives? Discuss this with the people around you, and we'll have the mic people for your comments. Also, raise your hand if you have a comment. Repeat the question one more time. Repeat the question. The first question, what are some things that we could do to help us better desire God in our everyday lives? Okay, I forgot. For right now, in case somebody hears Repeat the question. It's your question. Repeat it one more time so people are going to. Everyone's talking. Repeat it one more time. It's good to do if there's no comment. Repeat it one more time right now. Go. Okay. So the question again is what are some things that we could do to help us better desire God in our everyday lives? Um. One thing our group came up with is if we use the analogy of, per se, you drink caffeine and it almost becomes addictive. Well, if you turn that around in the opposite way, you spend time with God, it can almost become addictive in the good way. Um, if you read your Bible, spend time with him um, in prayer and just be with him, it can almost become addictive because he comes, he, be, it's, he seems so perfect and we're not, and we almost want to strive and desire to be with him. Um, our group was talking about, you know, like, if Michael Jordan walks in here, like, everyone, everyone want to take a picture with him, right? So, uh, we we came up with like if we look at Jesus as this cool person who like can do supernatural stuff and that and that person is our can be our friend. Like who who does not want to be friend with Jesus? That's good. That's good. One thing that I was thinking is like to a better desire God, you almost have to like succumb to a state of uh, helplessness, almost like humble yourself before him. Realize that like without God, you're like 
kind of just a speck in the universe. And that will really help you desire to be with him, with like the creator of the universe, like the person that created you. So, yeah. We, we were going to say something similar to Lance. There's a humility involved in admitting that we have a need, right? That we don't have it all figured out um, and that there are pieces that only God can supply, right? And once we understand that we have a need, it's much easier to seek that out. Um, I think that surrounding yourself with people that have a healthy relationship with God um, makes you want to learn more about God. Um, so, if you surrender yourself to God daily, that's what we came up with. Um, we talked a little bit about how sometimes our desire is lessened for God because there's so much distractions in our lives, and sometimes we actually have to get rid of some of those things. Um, in order to for our desire to grow for something better. One way I desire God is I look at the past and see how he's led me. I think it's easy to get caught up in the moment and thank God, where are you? But if we look at the moment and we realize we're alive today and that he's provided for us every single step of the way, then it's easier to desire him and be thankful for it. Yeah, those are our very good responses. Um, thank you very much. So the, another thing that we were thinking about in our desire for God is that um, this is more focused to the students at GLA. We're at GLA and we're in a good culture. Like every day we're doing all these worships and all these things, but they're not always our choice. All, like we're, a lot of the time I find uh, myself going not because like, I'm so excited to learn more about God and get closer to him. It's that I'm just going because it's mandatory and like we get off Dean's list if we don't. Um, and I think something that another, I guess it's not a problem, but we can make it a problem, is that we get the sense that we're good enough almost because we're going to all these worships. We're like, I, I have this relationship with God because this morning I, I worshiped him, and then we sang songs at chapel, and I listened to the guy talking, and then we had to our worship tonight. And I think that can almost be a danger because at the end of the day, we can realize, what, what did I learn from that? What did I take away? Because I wasn't checked in. I wasn't really there. I was just there because I had to be. Um, it, it's just like sometimes hard be, to desire God when it isn't our choice to spend time with him. So... A question that I'll ask is, what can we do to desire him, even though it's not our choice to spend time with him? And how can like, we stay checked in to grow closer to him and not just be there? So if you want to discuss that with the people around you and then give, uh, raise your hand and give an answer. Again, the question is, what can we do to stay checked in in the worships and not just be there because we have to be? Again, the question is, how can we stay checked in in the worships and not just be there because we have to be?
Uh, I got uh, I got an answer here. Uh, you know why they uh, require worship? Cause cause y'all freshmen, y'all ain't gonna go. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you 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 were supposed to be there physically, but I think you still have a choice to be there mentally. So I don't think that should be an excuse. But also I think the, the uh, should motivate us to even have to listen. And you also have a choice after the worship. You can spend time with God, you know what I mean? I have this um, sign in my house, it, this plaque, it says prayer changes things. And when I'm having trouble, what I do is I look at that and I think, wow, it's that easy. We just need to pray about it, and prayer changes things, it really does, and we could ask God, you know, you could ask God to help prepare your heart, you know, for the message, and pray that you absorb his messages also, but I find that plaque, that prayer really does change things. I've used it in my own life. Um, I think that, like, a big part of being able like staying engaged in worship is wanting it because a lot of times like we're there kind of like what Patrick is saying you still have a choice like mentally to engage yourself and if you're like coming into vespers or church or whatever it may be and you don't actually want to gain something from it and you're not giving your attention and letting the Holy Spirit like help you receive the message that you need to you're not going to so I think it's like a personal thing almost like if you're taking time every day to do your devotions and actually investing time in your relationship with Christ, then maybe you'll be more engaged during worship and maybe you'll want it more. So I think it's a personal wanting in your own like personal devotions life that also transfers over to you being engaged in worship. I, I think you guys are, are wise to recognize the difference between a meaningful relationship and compulsory attendance. Right? So, and the complacency that can come with, hey, I've done all the right things and been in all the right places. The most extreme example of that, of course, is the Pharisees who were constantly doing all the right things and keeping all the rules and all the law, and all it ended up with is them crucifying the creator of the world. Right? So there was, there was not a, a personal connection there. And then like Sophia said, you, you have, or Patrick as well, you have this opportunity to decide that you're going to engage or to not engage. And to a large degree, you can, you can control that outcome. And back to Lance's point about humility, if you enter into some of those things where you're required to be, understanding that you don't have it all figured out and that you have a need, the results are gonna show. If someone were to go up on stage and talk about your best friend, you would probably listen, right? Or if you were at someone's funeral and you knew the person really well, you would like listen to the words that people are saying about them. But if it's someone you've never met before, kind of wouldn't be as engaging. So I think that if you really have a desire to be paying attention and being attentive during the Sabbath school lessons or chapels, you want to be friends with God because then it will have that much more of a personal connection to you. I want to go back to some of the comments that were made at the last question, and that's uh, the humility that we need in understanding that we are desperately in need of a Savior. And when we recognize our condition that we're desperately in need of a Savior, we're desperately in need of someone to come and rescue us and save us, and I want to know more about that person, I have a desire to listen and I have a desire to glean and to learn. And the other comment I want to make, and it's kind of piggybacking on what Sophia was saying, is there's a huge difference between these two sentences. I have to go to worship and I get to go to worship. And it's that just that changing out the one word is a change of attitude, right? I have to go, it's compulsory. I get to go, it's a privilege. And when we make that switch in our mind of I have to to I get to, everything changes. Everything 
um, are the result changes. So, um, and we experience that, like when we have kids that come to GLA and they're super excited to come to GLA and they're saying, I'm gonna have a sweet experience because I get to go to GLA, guess what happens? They have a sweet experience because they get to go to GLA. And then we have students who come, it's like, I have to go to GLA and it's gonna be terrible and it's gonna be prison. And guess what their experience is? It's terrible and it's a prison, right? So the same, the same attitude change, uh, change happens when we approach worship and when we approach our Savior. I think uh, one of the beautiful things about like living in a community, uh, like a, especially like one of the coolest things about church is you have um, other people. And so I think like in answer to this question, one of the things that popped into my head was accountability and having other people or letting other people know like, hey, sometimes I get disengaged. If you see that like blank look start to go in my eyes during worship, like try to snap me out of it. Say, hey, uh, you know, what's going on up there? Or even afterward, um, asking questions, talking about it just to kind of remember and not fall into that, um, I don't know, just kind of disengaged, blanked out space. Um, and then I think it's interesting too when you engage in that like community of asking questions about what did we talk about today or you know what was that thing that Brett said during Sabbath school that kind of a thing um, can also make it more exciting and engaging by itself and the next time you're locked in even more. Um, I think a practical thing especially for the students at GLA is just like bringing your Bible to the different worships that we have. Like I know a lot of, like there's like maybe three people who bring their Bibles to chapel. And I know in the girls dorm, nobody brings their Bibles to dorm worship. But I feel like if you like bring your Bible and like when they say, oh, let's turn to this verse and you actually physically turn to it, that like just automatically makes you an active listener and it engages you. And then you're like, oh, I prepared to have worship, I prepared to come here, and so then you are gonna be more involved mentally than if you were to just like be sitting there and listening, because you could pay attention or you could just check out either way, but if you like bring your Bible and you're like following along, then I think that could just be a useful way to start. Um, I feel like if you see it as an opportunity for you to get close to God, that would help you. For example, if you like forgot to do your morning devotions, and then we have to come to chapel. If you're like, oh, maybe I should make up for my morning devotion. And you, you try to pay attention so that you can learn something. And then doing worship, like at the, in the evening, you can also try to learn something from there so that you can also learn by yourself and get to understand it more. I think that God loves us and he's already there for us. You just got to have they want to follow him because he's not going to push you away. He's not going to be like, go away, I don't want you. He already wants you. He died for us. And my sophomore year, uh, Miss Boothby used to say that, let's go ahead and pray to God to give us the want, to want to pray and to read the Bible. So we already, God died for us. We, we, got, we have the choice to follow him or to not. So if you have the want to follow him, he's not going to push you away. And I was just going to add um, that I appreciated so much the honesty of the freshmen when they were saying that there are days when they wake up and they feel like they're checking all the boxes, but perhaps your own heart doesn't feel like you've got a personal walk with the Lord. And just allow yourself grace in those moments because it doesn't go away as you become an adult. There are responsibilities we take on in our own local churches or and there are days where we show up and just do it because we know that's our long-term goal of service, not because it's necessarily in our heart at the moment. And God brings it back to our hearts. And so if you feel, don't let the devil tell you you're not, you're not good enough or you're not being a good enough Christian or because even in a, in a marriage, you know, there are days where you, you commit because you know it's your long-term goal and it's what you want, not because the feeling is there. So I appreciated hearing the honesty of the freshmen. A lack of interest in spiritual things can often be indica indicated by 
how we live our lives. Not that any of you guys as freshmen or sophomores or juniors or senior kids do this, but playing a lot of games makes spiritual things rather boring when you do the high intensity stuff. So how we live the rest of our life is gonna make a difference in where we, how we are when we come to worship. Um, God can also be kinda of like, uh, when you read your Bible, it can be kinda of like doing the dishes. You're just kinda, oh, it's another job. But if you uh, make it more exciting, like, you know, uh, some pastors like, you know, or like, they're just more exciting. Like they put more energy into it. Or if you do that during your worships, you can put more energy into it, and it could become more fun or, you know, just find ways to implement more fun. Um, another way, like they were saying, is go back and reflect in what you heard and just kind of think about it. Also, um, you don't just have to have one time for praying and doing, the, like, worship. Sometimes it's nice to just talk to God throughout the day or, like, just always be active in prayer. Like, you can be doing things and praying at the same time, like, just kind of implementing that in your life. Yeah, I really like what was said over here about how it's a simple thing we can do is just pray, like prayer changes things. And what Abel said kind of going on that is I think something that isn't said enough is that it's okay to pray the prayer of help me to want you. It's always like we pray and you'll get closer, but sometimes we need to pray that we will get closer because we need God to get closer to God. Um, also, like kind of what Havin said, like if we don't if we don't spend time with God, we don't know Him. So like the worships aren't really meaningful to us because we don't really care. But the more time we spend with them, it's like, oh, I know that. Like I know Him. That I hadn't thought about that before. And it's like way cooler to us. Also, it makes it more exciting. Um, uh, something that I found when I was looking at this is that the Psalms 73:25, and it says, "Who have I in heaven but Thee?" And there is none upon earth that I desire besides Thee. Um, this is like to me the pinnacle of a relationship with God, where nothing else is desirable except Him because he is the only thing that should be desirable. And I, I was like, man, who is this? Like, I want to learn more about this, this verse, right? And if you read um, the whole Psalm 73, it's the Psalm of Asaph. And um, he starts out the chapter saying, I was almost completely gone from God. He talks about his, like, he desired the foolish. He loved the corrupt. Like, everything about him was not uh, with God. And then about halfway through the chapter, he switches and he says, I now am continually with you. And I always thought that was really confusing. I was like, how did you go from not caring to all of a sudden I'm continually with you? And he says, um, God reached out and took him by the hand and that he pretty much just like held on. And the more time that he allowed God to reach out to him, the more he desired God. And he, it was just, it wasn't something that once you desire God, like all of a sudden you stop. It's because he's that perfect um, person to fill our void that we're looking for. Like the more time we can, the more time he was closer to God, the, the more he got closer until he says this verse. Um, then after this verse, in verse 26, he says, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Um, he talks about he failed afterward. He still messed up. His flesh was weak, but God was his strength of his heart. His desire was still there. It didn't mean he was perfect. And I feel like, for me at least, it discourages me because I'll have a moment of oh, I desiring God, and then all of a sudden I'll mess up and I'll be like, I must not have really desired God. I I wasn't that close. And I think this is a really good reminder that he was continually with God, but he still messed up. And I think if we remember that, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. The promise isn't that you'll be perfect. The promise is that you'll desire God and live for God.
So my goal, and I hope your goal, is to be like Asaph and for us to desire God. Um, let's pray. Dear Lord, um, thank you for this great discussion. Please help um, others to leave like I will leave today, knowing a little bit more about you and how to desire you. Please help us to remember that we're not going to be perfect, but that desiring you is all that we need. Amen. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Reaching 
toes the lie. Your love is like springtime, like My name is Daniel Sejak. I'm going to be praying in English. My name is Gina Morita, and I'll be praying in Spanish. Um, my name is Emily Shin. I'm, I'll be praying in Korean. 사랑이 많으신 하나님, 오늘 이렇게 좋은 안식일 주셔서 감사합니다. 어, 저희가 오늘 이 안식일을 다른 날과 구별되고 거룩하게 잘 지킬 수 있도록 인도해 주세요. 오늘 Freshman Sabbath School 잘 마치게 해주셔서 감사합니다. 그리고 오늘 남은 하루도 잘 보낼 수 있도록 인도해 주시길 예수님의 이름으로 기도드렸습니다. 아멘. Querido Señor que estás en los cielos, gracias por un nuevo día de vida que nos das. Gracias por la oportunidad de uh, participar en Freshman Sabbath School. Um, uh, por favor, sé con nosotros el resto, el resto del día y bendícenos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can be here at Freshman Sabbath School. Can you please be with all the freshmen and help us to continue to desire God. Amen. Amen. Um, we invite you to join us for church across the street. And it, I believe it starts at 10.50. So, you, yeah, please join us. <laughs>